Hey guys, it's Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Today I'm going to give you guys a cool breakdown of this scene I created in Element using the Star Wars models that are free from VitoCopilot.net. I'll have a link for that in the description where you can find them on their page and you can download them yourself as well. I created this scene with BB-8 on the day of the release of these models and it was well received. I had a lot of people ask me questions about the scene, different things about it such as the reflections and how various things were composed. And I figured the best way to showcase this was just to do a breakdown slash tutorial video covering everything. We're going to go into a lot of detail in this video, so hopefully you can pick up some cool tips from this. In order to follow along, you will need Element version 2.2, and again, you can get these free models from videocopilot.net. And I'll go ahead and show you everything here. We're going to create all the way up to this point here using Element 2.2, and then we're going to do some final compositing on it in order to get this final image here. It makes it look a little more realistic and a little bit more in the feel of Star Wars. And something else that's pretty fascinating is just how far you can push Element and the results you can get. We'll take a look here. This is what the initial scene looks like when you first bring the models into Element. So we're going to be making the journey from this all the way to this, which is pretty amazing that this can all be done in After Effects. With that being said, let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start out here on the base element. So again, this is when I just first brought the models and set them up in Element. So I'm just going to scroll around the scene here. So what I've got is the corridor hallway model. I've got the BB-8 model and the lightsaber model set up here. And again, this is exactly how they look when you first set them up and bring them in in Element. I'll just jump into the scene setup here. All right, so now we're inside of the Element UI, and I just want to show you a breakdown of kind of the different groups I've got going on that composed of this scene. So again, I have the BB-8 model. I actually have him on two different groups. One is just for his body. The other one is for his head because I wanted to rotate his head kind of looking down at the ground. The other group is the corridor right here, which is just this shot of this corridor hallway. You see it's quite a large model, but if you zoom in here, you can actually go inside of the corridor and that's where we're going to be working. And finally, I've got Luke's lightsaber here. So that was all the groups that I had, and I just set those up, moving them around here to create this scene. Now we move over to this next composition, which is a little bit more textured here. And again, you can see I rotated BB-8's head because it was on another group. And all you have to do with that is just come over here to the particle replicator, and you can just rotate that around here and position his head. So again, that's why I put that on another group. But you can see we start to get some cool reflections on BB-8, and I wanted to show you guys how I did this and the different material settings I used in Element. So we're going to jump back into Element here in the scene setup. And really to get this texturing to look right, there's just a lot of fine tweaking you have to do and kind of experimenting. That's what I did to achieve those results. And there's lots of different ways to go about getting these results. But let's go ahead and open this up. So I'm going to select the BB-8 head model here. So this is just the head. I'm going to open this up, and you can see I've got the body turned off. So on the head texture here, we're just going to come down here. We're just going to tweak some things with the glossiness, the reflectivity, and a few things in the basic settings here. And what I like to do initially when you have this model and you bring it in, the glossiness is going to be all the way up to 100. And this is a little bit tricky because it gives the illusion that the entire model is going to be glossy and you're not taking into account that actually this has a texture map for the glossiness here. So whatever's black on this is going to be the glossy areas, and if it's white, it's going to be less glossy. So with this in mind, there will be areas on this model where there is not going to be any gloss affecting it. And I want there to be gloss on everything with the model. So in order to achieve that, I just drag the glossiness here down to about 60%. And you can see here, if we look at the top of his head here on the metallic, we can see that that's getting a little bit glossier as I bring that down. Even though, you know, in your mind, in the back of your mind, you think, well, I'm bringing it down lower so it's not going to be as glossy. Well, in reality, what we're doing is we're saying for the entire model to have more glossiness on it and for this texture map here to not have as much of an effect. The same thing goes for the reflectivity. If we bring this all the way up to 100% as it would be when it first comes in, you can see some of these areas in the black here are not very reflective. If I set this down to about 90%, this is going to give us the option to adjust some reflectivity. And this is huge, particularly for the multi-pass mixer we're going to use later on. I'll just demo that real quick. I'm going to set the reflectivity here all the way up to 100. I'm going to exit out of here. If I come down here to the output in the multi-pass mixer here, this is really where I like to tweak my final scene and get some really good adjustments here on my scene. But right now with the reflectivity all the way up to 100, and we have this mat that's not really letting us adjust the reflectivity for the entire model, if I just grab this and move it around, you can see we're not getting that much of an effect on the entire model. We're getting some reflection here on the metallic areas and on his lens there. But overall, for his entire body, we're not getting that much reflection difference. So I'm going to set this back to 1. And a quick way we can fix that is if I just bring this down for the reflectivity on the head material here, 
down to about 90%, just a little bit here, has reflectivity all over it. So now when we come back here to the multi-pass mixer and we adjust this, you can see we're now getting a nice adjustment all over BB-8 on his head there. We're actually not getting that much result in his body because we haven't moved to that yet, but we're gonna get to that. So those are the bigger adjustments here. On the bump, I actually brought that up a little bit from 100 to about 134, just because I wanted to get a little bit more detail on the head if there was gonna be some light kind of bouncing around, but you don't have to do that. That was just for this particular scene. And the final adjustment I did down here for the specular multiplier, this would have been set at 100 initially. And you're getting a little bit of hot spots here that I didn't really like that much, so I brought that down to about 12. Now for these small lens here, the two lenses, all I really did for them was set them at a screen mode for the blend for the small glass lens here. So that's that one there. It's going to make it kind of a, give it a brighter look when we work with it in our scene. And that's going to be good to make it kind of seem like it's illuminated. And for the bigger glass, I just left it at normal. You could set it at screen, but it was a little too bright and it's going to get affected too much by the reflectivity adjustments I'm going to make later. So I actually liked it better at normal. Now something else you can see is we're reflecting our environment map on BB-8 here. This is a good environment map to use. It kind of matches our scene. And I left it on for the time being just so you guys can see the adjustments I was making so far. But if we jump back out here, you can see that environment map reflecting here off of BB-8. And in reality, when we go down here to our final image, I actually don't have that environment map on. And that's because BB-8 is entirely inside of this hallway. So I just want him to reflect the hallway. If we have him reflecting the hallway and the environment map, just that little subtle difference is going to be enough for you as a viewer. You're going to recognize something's off. And it's not going to look as realistic. So let me show you how to work around that here. What I did for BB-8 on his head here, just selecting the model now, not the texture anymore, but the model, come down here and under reflect mode, we're going to set the mode to be spherical. He's kind of a rounded object and we want him to reflect everything around him in the scene. And we're also going to disable the environment. So watch what happens here on the reflections when I click this. So you can see it turns that off and this doesn't look nearly as good. This looks very kind of plain and almost cell shaded, but later on it's going to be a lot better when we stick this inside of our scene outside in the After Effects scene. So we're going to do these same adjustments here to BB-8's body. So I'm going to select the body texture there. And again, I brought the glossiness on it down from 100 to 20. So you can see what a difference that's making. You can see it gets more reflective overall. And on reflectivity, I also brought that down to 90%. And for the spectrum multiplier, I brought that down to about 60. And again, I selected the model. And for the mode, I'm going to set that to spherical and disable the environment. So it should look something like that. As far as the other two things in the scene, the corridor and the lightsaber, I did similar adjustments on them. So in the corridor here for the floor texture, I brought the bump on that down quite a bit. So there wasn't as much grittiness on the actual floor. I tweaked the glossiness down to about 99%. And for the specular and environment multipliers, I actually brought those up a lot. So you can kind of see the difference. I'm getting a little more reflectivity on the floor, having that cranked up. And with the environment, I just kind of bring it in subtly. This is not necessarily that crucial. This was probably something I tweaked more when I was just kind of experimenting with the scene. And for the lightsaber, we did a similar thing. If I select that texture, I brought the bump on that down to about 13%, so it wasn't nearly as bumpy. And for the specular multiplier, I cranked that all the way up really high, as well as the environment. So I'll play with these so you can just check this out. So if I set that to zero, you can see it's not nearly as reflective and shiny. It's still chrome, but we want to make it extreme. And the same thing with the environment multiplier, I crank that up a lot. And with this particular environment map that I was using, I'll go ahead and show you that now, it looked like this. But you can use pretty much any environment map that's kind of black and white like that and get similar results. And with the lightsaber, I actually left the reflect mode, I set that to environment and I let it render the environment. I didn't click disable in this case, I left that on because I really wanted this to be bright. And that was really all I did for the actual texturing of the models. Now we're gonna do a lot more texturing outside of the element interface out here in After Effects in order to tweak this and make it look a little better. But up until this point, all I did was arrange these models, set them up in the scene. And so at this point in your scene, your scene's probably gonna look something kind of like this. And this is, I have an ambient light set up here just so we could preview this before. But this is what your scene should look like now because we're not reflecting our environment on our BB-8 unit. 
So we're getting this nice dark black area here, which really doesn't look very appealing at all and does not look very photo real. But again, I've got an ambient light set up here and I definitely recommend doing that when you're just kind of tweaking things. But let's go ahead and jump to this next composition here. We're gonna look more at the multi-pass mixing and some other adjustments with Element. So what I recommend doing now is actually setting up your lighting. And that's what I've done here initially. I just set up a ambient light at 50%. If you need to do that, just go up to layer, new light. And in this case, again, this was an ambient light set at 50%. After I had that set up, I knew I wanted to set up some more lights. I wanted the light to be directly above BB-8, kind of creating this moody feel, kind of lighting him from above. And that way everything else in the scene is kind of darker and he's kind of lit up and that's gonna create some nice shadows on BB-8 and just look more moody for what I'm going for. In order to do that, I definitely recommend using spotlights. Spotlights are kind of the secret with Element, in my opinion, if you're wanting to yield the most realistic lighting results. Think of it as if you're setting up lights in, in a realistic scene. So if you're on set, you're gonna set up lights. Lights are gonna be similar to spotlights. You know, a lot of times I'll use parallel lights because those are easier. You don't have to fine tune them and, and position them as well and you can still use shadows and stuff like that with them. Realistically, if you're gonna be using a parallel light, that's only gonna be used in a scene that's outside, you know, if you're lighting a city, anything like that, where there's gonna be a really big light source like the sun. In our case here, we're indoors, and you know, just by looking at this scene, we can tell there's not this huge light that's over here in the corner. So this is really gonna be lit with spotlights. Now I'll just show you another example of this in this kind of light comparison here. So here is BB-8 I've got set up here, and he's currently being lit by a parallel light with shadows. And you can see we're getting a nice results. This looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of this. But now let's go ahead and look at it with a spotlight. The same similar lighting setup. And so now we have a nice spotlight here. We're getting some nice shadow fall off similar to the parallel light. But let's just look at the contrasting difference here. You can see what a difference that makes. So this is the parallel light and this is the spotlight. We're getting a much nicer rounded kind of shadow result here. And we have more control because with the spotlight, we can come in here and we can adjust the cone angle of the light. So I can bring this down and see we can adjust and get more fine tuned results for what we want and they're gonna look a lot better and more realistic. So let's jump back over here to this composition. So what I did was I set up a spotlight directly above BB-8. I'll turn that on now. And you can see we get this nice feathering kind of fall off spherical around here. I'm gonna adjust to another custom view here so you can see this a little easier. But I've got this light set up right here at the top of the scene just basically like it's a light above him and it's shining down and I adjusted the cone angle here. I'll go ahead and open this up and show you that. So at the cone angle is at 102 and you can adjust that to what you would like it to be. But the big thing here is also the cone feather. This is gonna create a very nice realistic fall off of the light. If I bring this all the way down to zero, you can see how wide this light actually is. But when I bring this up to 100, very nice soft lighting and softer lighting can be difficult to replicate in After Effects or in Element in general. So using spotlights is a good way to get that softer lighting effect. The other thing that's worth noting is very crucial with this is because this corridor is all closed off, you wanna make sure this light is actually inside the corridor. So you can see I've got it right up here at the roof, but it's actually inside the corridor, it's not above it. And I'll show you why that's so important. So if I zoom out here, just for the time being, I'm gonna turn on shadows with element. You're gonna see the problem this creates if that light was outside of element. So come here to shadows, I'm gonna enable shadows. So we're getting some shadows from BB-8, but I'm gonna grab that light. If I just move it up here, you can see those shadows go away completely because if this was outside of the corridor, all these shadows are gonna be being blocked by the roof. So I wanna undo that. So you're gonna wanna make sure your light is inside the corridor. That's kind of a crucial thing. So I'm gonna go back to Element here and I'm gonna turn those shadows back off because we'll get to that here a little bit later. If I go to another custom view here, you can see here's the corridor. So sometimes it can be difficult to gauge where that light is in your scene, but just look at the shadows there and make sure you're getting them on your actual Star Wars model. Now the next light I wanted to set up here was I wanted there to be some illumination on this lightsaber, drawing a little more attention to that and it's kind of acting as if the light from BB-8 is gonna be lighting up that lightsaber. So what I did was I created another spotlight here. I'll just turn that on and I'll select it. You can see it's just a narrower spotlight on the lightsaber. I'll turn it on and off there for you to see. And you can see this light source is actually coming from the roof again here, but that doesn't really matter. We don't have to position it exactly right here on BB-8 because we're gonna kind of fake this where it's coming from. As long as it's lighting up the lightsaber and kind of lighting up the floor here, that's all we really need. And now that we've got the lighting set up, we can jump in here to some of the render settings in order to tweak this and make it look a lot better here. This is where it's really gonna jump ahead quite a bit in the quality. 
for the physical environment, I just left this alone, lighting influence at 25%, because that's really not going to matter, because again, we're not really using our environment map in this case, because we've disabled it. We're wanting to reflect this actual corridor. On the lighting as well, I just set this to use comp lights and none for the other lighting. And for shadows, what I did was I used shadow mapping, and we're going to enable that now. And you can see we're getting some nice shadows from our lights, shadows on the ground underneath BB-8, underneath his head here, and from the lightsaber. And for your lights, you're going to want to make sure, I'm going to hit AA on them. And if I scroll down here, just make sure your cast shadows is set to on. So if you're not seeing that, just set that to on. And with the map size for the shadows, I set that to around 4,000. You can go all the way up to 8,000 if you need even more detail, but in this case, I felt that 4,000 was enough for this scene. For shadow samples, I put that at 6, and for the blur radius, I put that at 4. So initially, this may be at 1. So you can see these are a little bit sharper, harsher shadows here, and I wanted to have a little more softness, so I just set that to 4. Get some nice fall off there, again, kind of replicating the fall off from the spotlight above. Now the next adjustment I made was in ambient occlusion, and this is where Element shines. The SSAO is really good. I use that a lot in different Element scenes, but if you want something to look photorealistic, you've got to use the ray traced AO mode here. So I'm just going to enable that and look at this difference this makes here. Look at that. Now with ambient occlusion on, we're getting some amazing shadowing detail, kind of coming up BB-8 here, making him look much more kind of 3D, less flat. All these back crevices back here in the scene are getting accented by this ambient occlusion. Again, I'll just check this on and off. So right here, it looks pretty good. It's kind of more video game-ish, a little bit cel-shaded look, but when we turn this on, just adds a ton of contrast and depth to the scene. And currently right now, I'm viewing this on the preview render mode. So if this was in full render, I'll just check this on for a second. So with the full render mode on, you're gonna get even better results and kind of less spotting. But for the sake of this tutorial, as I'm just working through it, I'm gonna set this back to preview. But it's a good way to gauge. A lot of times when I'm kind of trial and erroring. I'll be going back and forth between preview and full render. That way I can still experiment without putting too much strain on my computer. And really I left these ambient occlusion options all as they are default. I didn't do any other tweaking here, just as long as the ray tracing was on for ambient occlusion in the scene. So I'll go ahead and close that up. Now for fog, I actually was wanting to kind of do some blue fog kind of back here, creating a little more of an atmospheric feel, you know, similar to how Star Wars would be. And I was going to add some blue fog, but I actually found later, I'll enable this just temporarily so we can see this just to get some blue fog back here in the background for when I color grade it. But I actually found a better way to do this, and I'll show this a little bit later on in the tutorial. We'll get there. So I didn't use any fog for that part of the scene. And finally, at this stage, I knew I wanted to add some depth of field to this shot. So with this camera that I'm currently using, I'll go ahead and select that and show you some of the camera settings I've got going on here. So I'm currently using an 80 millimeter focal length on my camera. I felt that that was going to be a good focal length that would still allow me to do some realistic depth of field because I didn't want it to be too shallow on something too wide. I'll just go to a custom view here. You can see I've got just my camera set up in my scene and this is where it's focusing in on. And that would be pretty realistic for this type of shot, an 80 millimeter focal length again. So what I did for the depth of field was I did two different things here. I actually used element for part of it. So I'm going to come back here to depth of field. And in order to find where the depth of field was at, I like to set this to the focus indicator. And so I'll come down here to my camera. I'll hit AA on the keyboard. And for depth of field, I'll just check that to be on. And what the focus indicator is gonna allow me to do is just to find out and fine tune where I want the sharpness of the focus to be. So in this case, I want it to be on the front of BB-8, but wide enough still to kind of get the lightsaber in here a little bit. And for the depth of field, I set the aperture to 12 and the blur to 100, which is relatively low. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to tweak the depth of field in element using the element settings here of the depth of field. So I'm going to set this now to be pixel blur. And now we're getting some nice fall off here. It's almost a little bit too much depth of field for this shot because if you have too much depth of field, it's going to make your scene look as if it's smaller. Because, you know, smaller objects, you know, when you're focusing in on them, you can get in real shallow depth of field. Bigger objects are going to have less depth of field. So in this case, I pushed it up a little bit probably too far because BB-8 could be perceived as being a little smaller than he was in the actual movie. But I'm getting some nice bokeh here in the background. Initially, the depth of field radius multiplier for element will be set to 1. So this is what it may look like for you when you first type in those settings. But I wanted to come in here and just play with this multiplier here, and I set it to 3. And I found that, that gave me some nice fall-off results here and some cool bokeh in the background. 
All right, and that's all the adjustments I made to the render settings for this element scene. And now we can move on to the output. And this is probably my favorite part when I'm compositing using element because using the gamma and the multipass mixer that we have here, we're really gonna be able to fine tune our scene. And we have access to all of these multipass mixer options here that are all here together and make it just really quick and easy to make drastic adjustments change the entire mood of the shot just with these dials. You don't have to go through and search out for different settings. So just as an example here, this is the pre multipass mixer adjustments here. Now let's go ahead and look at what this will look like after we make some just simple adjustments. So we're going to go from this to this and you can see what a difference that makes. And again, this is all done just by adjusting the gamma and some of these other multipass mixer settings here. So let's go ahead and jump into this with the multi sampling. I usually like to set the super sampling to about two, and turn on the enhance multi sampling. And this is gonna make quite a bit of difference, especially with our depth of field. Just to make sure we get some nice clean edges here. I'm currently viewing this at half resolution just for the preview, but that's gonna make a big difference for the sharpness and kind of detail of our model. It'll also make sure we don't get any kind of unwanted grittiness around the edges. Now for the gamma, this is something I always like to adjust here with the scene. And a lot of times I'll bring it up above 2.2 to kind of flatten the scene out so that the composite kind of looks more realistic. But in this case, I want to actually add a little more contrast to this to make it look a little bit more moody. So I'm going to set this down to about 1.92. And you can see that kind of just brings down the contrast, darkens up the black areas here, just adds a little bit more mood to it. Gives us more of a drastic contrast between the lighting here and the background. Now for the diffuse, if we look at BB-8, he's a little bit too bright here on the back. It doesn't look very photo real. So what I did with this was I just set this to 0.58, so dropped it by nearly half. And you can see what a difference that makes here on the fall off and specular on his back there. Now for the next adjustment I did was with the reflectivity and this is going to be a huge difference in giving the BB-8 unit that kind of glossy sheen look which really helps sell it in this final image if we take a look here you can see we get this nice kind of sheen on BB-8. So if we jump back here under reflectivity, again, because we did those adjustments initially on the textures of BB-8, where we brought the reflectivity down from 100 to about 90%, now when we adjust the reflectivity here, we're going to be able to drastically change his appearance. So I'm going to set this now to 2, and let's look at what a difference this makes. Look at that. We're really seeing some good reflections of the corridor here on him, and it just makes a world of difference. I'm just going to set this down to 0, just so we can see kind of a more drastic difference here. So you can see how big reflections alone help sell and sell this composite to make it look realistic. Without them, we just get a very flat, kind of matte looking model. And if I bring this back up to two, it just really helps sell the fact that he's in this scene and we're just getting all this other nice accents on BB-8. Now finally for the shadows, for me they were a little bit dark down here, especially at the base. You know, anything this size, it's not going to be completely black down here at the very bottom. So all I did was I just brought those down to about 70%, so 0.7, just to lighten the shadows up overall. They're still there, and they still accent nicely, but just to keep it from getting too contrasty. And that's all I did for the output. So now our element scene, for the most part, is relatively done, except for our final compositing with color grading and things like that. But what I like to do at this phase, after working with Element, is I'll set the resolution to full, and I'll also come down here to the render mode and set that on full render. I'm not going to do it for the tutorial sake, just because on the screen it's not going to make that big of a difference for you guys. But again, I would set everything to full, and I would go ahead and render out a screenshot of this if I'm just working with kind of a screenshot composite like this. That way when I do my color grading and everything else, I don't have to put the extra strain on my machine to render this scene, as well as rendering each change I do with the composite. So again, I would set the render mode to full and the resolution to full. And I would just select my composition, go up here to composition, save frame as file. And then I would just come down here and go to custom. And I would set this as a PNG sequence, click OK, and just render out that PNG image and then import that back in to do my final compositing on it. So you can see here I've got my main scene and I would drag this into a new composition. And that's what I did right here for the final composite composition. You can see all the different layers that I've added here on top of this scene. And we're going to go through each of these and I'll show you what I did. So this is just the high res render image of the scene. I'll just zoom in here. You can see the nice detail on everything. And again, this is just all from Element. So if you just have Element 2.2 and these free models, you can create this right here. Everything else we create here. 
you can do for the most part with the free tools in After Effects, but some of them I use some other third-party tools just for efficiency and speed. The other thing I wanted to kind of add to this scene, if you remember when I mentioned the fog earlier, I wanted to add kind of a blue atmosphere in the background here. And I was experimenting with using lights, and I was also experimenting with using the fog, and I wasn't getting really any results that I was pleased with, and I wanted something I could adjust really easy on the fly near the end of my composite. So the best solution I actually found was if we jump back in here to the render we had before, so I'm back in the actual element render right now, what I decided to do was come down here to the output, and I just would change this to the Z depth. So I would get a Z depth map with the depth of field on, so you can see we're getting some white back here, the farther away they are from the front of the scene, and the front, it's the darker black colors. So again, I just set everything back to full resolution, and rendered out a PNG of this Z-Depth map here. If we come back here to the final composite, what I did was I brought in that Z-Depth PNG and put it above my main scene image. And let me just turn this on. You can see what this is gonna do now. So you can see that kind of just subtle blue hints it's added to the background. I'll show you how I did that. So what I did was I just brought in, I'm gonna change the opacity here. I've got it down really low. So there's our Z-Depth map. You can see it's really detailed, really sharp, again, rendering it out with the full render settings. And in order to make this kind of look like fog, I just applied the tint effect to it, and I mapped the white to this blue color, so we get kind of this blue fog in the background. And so I just brought the opacity on it down quite a bit. You can see you can adjust kind of how much fog I want to be in the scene. So this is a really cool tool using the depth map to kind of make fine-tune adjustments. So I set it to 12%, and in order to make it pop just a little bit more, I set it to a screen mode. You see it just lightens it up, and it's just a very subtle accent. And the reason I want this to be so subtle right now is later on I'm going to add some more kind of cyan blue to the scene. And because this background now kind of has a slight tint to it, it'll just help things pop. It'll also help replicate the kind of tealish look that was in the new Force Awakens movie, and that's kind of what I was going for with this. Now the next thing I want to do is I wanted to kind of showcase the light here, make it a little bit brighter, kind of give it a little bit of volume to it. And what I did, this is a really simple and easy trick, I just created a curves adjustment on an adjustment layer here, and I just went ahead and masked around kind of where this light would be. And you can see that here, and I'll just turn off the mask there, and you can see this just brightens it up very subtly. It helps sell kind of this volumetric light hitting the lightsaber, and it looks like it's coming straight from BB-8's light there. And in order to sell this even more, I wanted to add some particles in there as they're kind of like being illuminated as the light hits them. So what I did in this case was I just took some particle footage that I had, and I masked that out again. And I just masked that out so it's only being lit up where the light's kind of going right there. And this is just some particle footage, just some organic floating particle footage. I went ahead and set that also to a screen mode. And this kind of just helps sell the effect that these particles are passing through the light and being illuminated. And down here for the lightsaber, I kind of wanted there to be like some dust or something coming off of that. So what I did was actually took some of the smoke footage from the Accent Essentials, you can see right here. And I also masked that out, and I just set that to an add mode. So if I turn these on, you can see. And what this does kind of does is just imitate kind of like heat, like a lightsaber battle just got done, and this lightsaber's laying in the corridor. Spoiler alert, sorry about that. But uh, anyway, and again, this was all just done with 2D layers on our final composite. So it works out really well, especially when combined with that spotlight we did with Element. Now I wanted to add more of like a filmic look to the overall shot, and the way I achieved that was using a third-party plugin called Koji Advance. And this is really just going to add more till to the background and a little bit more contrast. Now you can use any film emulator. You can use Film Convert, or the film emulator from Red Giant, or a lookup table, or you can just even use some of the tools inside of After Effects to, to create a look similar to this. I'll go ahead and turn on this adjustment layer so you can see what I'm talking about here. So you can see it just adds just a subtle cyan and kind of greenish tone. Just create some more mood to the overall look. And all I did in Koji Advance here was I brought the gamma down just a touch to kind of add just a little more contrast in the darks, pop the gain up a little bit to make these lights brighter, and I just added some cyan and some yellow here to the scene. So I'll just set these back to zero so you can just see what this does. And again, you could do this with the curves adjustments or any other color grading tools in After Effects you wanted to try out. So I'll just set this to 2.2. So there's our cyan here and just a little bit more yellow kind of give it a little bit of a greener tone. We're kind of pretending like this is a shot set up on one of the First Order ships here, so it's kind of got a darker tone to it. 
Now the next adjustment I made was with the saturation on BB-8, the kind of yellow orangish color here. Felt like it was popping out a little too strong. So I just did a general desaturation of the orange yellow color there with Colorista. So I'll just turn that on. So I'll just check this on and off so you can kind of see the difference there. It's very subtle, but it just takes out a little bit of the punch of that color. And I'll just open up Colorista here and you can kind of see exactly what I did. I made no other adjustments except again right here on the orange color. Brought down the saturation by about 20%. You could use the color correction hue and saturation to also make this similar adjustment just with the native effects and after effects. Now we're going to move into a little bit more of the actual beating up of the footage as it would say to add in some imperfections and make this look a little less CG and the first way to do this obviously with Star Wars is to overlay some film grain and you could do this a number of ways. Some film emulators have it built in. I just had some footage here of some film grain and I'll go ahead and set this to a normal mode here so you can see it. So this is just some 35 millimeter film grain and I just brought it over, set it to an overlay mode. And if we zoom in here, you can see this adds this nice gritty detail on everything. It really helps sell the depth of field in the background, makes it look very nice. I'll just check this on and off so you can see the difference that's making. It does a great job here on the highlights of the light as well. Let me check this on and off. You can see the fall off there, it looks really good. So again, if we're wanting to match Star Wars, film grain is going to be crucial to kind of get that same aesthetic. The next thing I did was I just added a subtle vignette here, and that was just with a mask and a curves adjustment. So this is extremely subtle, just kind of imitating some lens vignette. So if you see down there at the very bottom corner, just a very subtle accent. And the final thing I did was some chromatic abrasion, and there's some, a variety of ways you can do this with After Effects. I used a tool called Separate RGB. I know Red Giant has a really nice uh, chromatic abrasion tool. And this is really great because it's going to add just a little subtle imperfection to the footage. So I'm just going to check this on here. And you can see the difference this makes. The, it, it doesn't do much, but it makes a very subtle difference, especially over here on the light. So you can see we get this kind of red and teal coming off the edges here. If we zoom in on BB-8, it's very subtle around the edge of his head here. But it's those little imperfections that are going to help match the original look of Star Wars. And so I'll just check this on and off so you can see the difference there. It's really subtle, but it's just imitating those realistic imperfections to help sell this shot. All right, guys, that's everything that went into creating this scene with BB-8. Hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown and picked up some tips. If you have any other questions, post them in the comments and I'll get back to you. This has been Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Thanks for watching.